In this lesson, we introduce enols and enolates, focusing on their formation and the regioselectivity of enolization. Most carbonyls undergo tautomerization, a rapid isomerization via simple proton movement. While there are many types of tautomerization, the conversion of a carbonyl into an enol is by far the most common and is often referred to, somewhat inaccurately, as keto-enol tautomerization. If we look at the example, we see the tautomerization of acetone into its enol tautomer. Tautomerization requires that the carbonyl have at least one alpha proton, a proton on a carbon adjacent to the carbonyl. Most enols are considerably less stable than the carbonyl tautomer, which means that the equilibrium of most tautomerizations greatly favors the carbonyl. The concentration of enol at equilibrium is very low. Enolization is the deliberate formation of an enol or enolate from a carbonyl. The reaction can be promoted by both acid and base. Under acidic conditions, the carbonyl oxygen is protonated by the strong acid and an alpha proton then removed by a weak base. Under basic conditions, the alpha proton is removed by the base to form a resonance stabilized enolate. The oxygen can then be protonated by a weak acid if one is present. When using particularly strong bases, the protonation of the oxygen is not possible, and the enolization results in the formation of an enolate rather than an enol. Note that, like tautomerization, enolization requires that the carbonyl have at least one alpha proton, and that the two steps from both acid and base promoted enolization are the same. It's just the order of the steps that's different. We don't usually consider hydrogens attached to carbons to be particularly acidic, but the acidities of carbon acids actually vary considerably. Here we show the deprotonations of three very different carbon acids. In the first reaction, we see the deprotonation of an alkane, which has a pKa of about 50. There are really no common bases that can deprotonate an alkane. The conjugate base is simply too unstable. In the second reaction, we see the deprotonation or enolization of a ketone, which typically has a pKa of around 20. The conjugate base is a resonance stabilized enolate. The resonance spreads out the negative charge, enhancing the stability greatly. A common base like hydroxide will produce a very small amount of enolate, converting only about 0.001% of the ketone. This might seem like an insignificant amount, but is actually enough to allow the enolate to undergo further reactions. A very strong base, like LDA, gives essentially quantitative conversion of the ketone to the enolate. The structure of LDA, lithium diisopropyl amide, is shown here. It's similar to sodium amide in both structure and basicity. The two isopropyl substituents provide steric bulk that greatly limit its nucleophilic character, making it a strong base, but a poor nucleophile. LDA is an extremely important base and is frequently used in base-promoted enolization. In the third reaction, we see the deprotonation of 2,4-pentane-dione. This compound has two unique sets of alpha protons. The set located between the two carbonyls is special. Enolization at this site results in an enolate conjugate base with three resonance structures, spreading out the negative charge even more. This makes these protons, flanked by two carbonyls, particularly acidic and have a pKa of about 9. And remember that the pKa of water is 16. This means that even a common base such as hydroxide will result in nearly quantitative enolization. Understanding how much enolate has been formed in an enolate reaction can be vitally important. Often, the outcome of a reaction with an enolate intermediate can be greatly impacted by the extent of enolization that's occurred. So now that we know what enols and enolates are and how they're formed, we can begin to explore how they react. Both enols and enolates are good nucleophiles. This means that the process of enolization transforms a carbonyl, which is usually electrophilic, into a nucleophile. This makes carbonyls extraordinarily important, versatile functional groups. Enolizable carbonyls can undergo alpha substitution reactions via enolization and subsequent reaction with an electrophile. Under acidic conditions, an enol will form and serve as the nucleophile. In this example, we see a ketone enolized to give an enol. The pi bond of the enol then attacks an electrophile, ultimately leading to alpha substitution. As you can see, a lone pair on the adjacent oxygen moves towards the alkene, enhancing the nucleophilic character of the pi electrons. Under basic conditions, an enolate will form and serve as the nucleophile. In the example, we see the same ketone enolized to give an enolate. Just as before, the pi bond of the enolate attacks an electrophile, resulting in alpha substitution. The negative charge makes an enolate a considerably stronger nucleophile than an enol, 
and most of the reactions that involve enolization utilize enolates rather than enols. In some cases, enolization can result in the formation of two unique enolates. This is most often encountered in the enolization of asymmetric ketones, those with two different carbon groups attached to the carbonyl. In the example, we see the base-promoted enolization of 2-methylcyclohexanone. The top reaction shows the deprotonation of the more highly substituted alpha carbon to the right of the carbonyl. The lower reaction shows the deprotonation of the less substituted alpha carbon to the left of the carbonyl. Deprotonation of the more highly substituted alpha carbon will give a more highly substituted alkene, making it more stable than the enolate that arises from the deprotonation of the less substituted alpha carbon. Remember that alkene stability is enhanced with increasing degree of substitution. The enolate with the more highly substituted alkene is thus favored thermodynamically and is considered the thermodynamic enolate. In contrast, deprotonation of the less substituted alpha carbon proceeds more rapidly due to the less cluttered steric environment. It's simply easier for a base to access the protons on the less substituted alpha carbon. The enolate with the less substituted alkene is thus favored kinetically and is considered the kinetic enolate. The regioselectivity of enolization, that is, whether the thermodynamic or kinetic enolate is formed, will of course impact the product of an alpha substitution reaction. Fortunately, the regiochemistry can usually be controlled by the reaction conditions that are used. The thermodynamic enolate is favored by conditions that promote equilibration. Warmer temperatures will provide enough energy for the enolization to reverse back to the carbonyl. Weaker bases, such as hydroxide, will have a relatively acidic conjugate acid, allowing the enolate to reacquire the proton and reform the carbonyl. Additionally, smaller bases can more easily approach the more sterically congested alpha carbon than can bulkier bases. In contrast, the kinetic enolate is favored by conditions that deter equilibration. Colder temperatures limit the energy available and slow the reverse reaction back to the carbonyl. Stronger bases, such as LDA, have a very weak conjugate acid, preventing the enolate from reacquiring the proton to reform the carbonyl. Additionally, bulkier bases will have difficulty approaching the more sterically congested alpha carbon, enhancing selectivity for deprotonation at the less substituted alpha carbon. The ability to control the regioselectivity of enolization adds to the synthetic utility of many enolate reactions, allowing the selective formation of different products using the same chemistry.